This is Lecture 7 for Music Theory Fundamentals. Today, we will further our discussion of intervals, specifically minor thirds and major thirds. We'll start with a quick review of minor seconds and major seconds. Then we will learn how to identify minor and major thirds. We'll talk about how to construct minor and major thirds using the counting half steps method and the key signature method. Let's get started. Diatonic half steps. We learned about these early on in the semester. A diatonic half step moves to the adjacent letter name or the adjacent line or space. Diatonic whole steps also move to the adjacent letter name, the adjacent line or space on the staff. To find a half step interval on a keyboard, you move to the neighboring key. To find a whole step interval on a keyboard, you need to move two keys or two half steps away. In lecture two, we learned about half steps and whole steps. Today we learned that we can call these intervals by a different name, seconds. A step away from any pitch, when spelled with the adjacent letter name, line or space on the staff, is called a second. Each of these intervals is a second. Some are major seconds, some are minor seconds, but every time you construct an interval of a line to a neighboring space or a space to a neighboring line, you are constructing some kind of second. When we label intervals, we identify quantity and quality. The quantity of each of these intervals is a second. The seconds that are one half step apart or neighboring keys on the keyboard are minor seconds. The seconds that are one whole step or two half steps apart are called major seconds. The correct way to label a major second is with a capital M and the number two. The correct way to label a minor second is lowercase m with a two next to it. Check your keyboard to identify these as half steps or whole steps, but label them this time as capital M2 for major second or lowercase m2 for minor second. Pause the video if you need a little more time. Remember, minor seconds will be neighboring keys on the keyboard and major seconds will be two half steps apart. Our first interval is from an E to an F. These are neighboring keys on our keyboard, so this is a minor second. The next interval we see is an A to a B. There are two half steps between these two pitches, so this is a major second. The next two pitches in the bass clef are D to E. Two half steps, major second. Then we see a G to an A, which is also two half steps apart, so that's a major second. And finally, B to C. And by now you should recognize these keys are neighbors on our keyboard, so this is a minor second. To put things simply, a second is a line to a neighboring space or a space to a neighboring line. A minor second is one half step, a major second is two half steps. We refer to this as the counting half steps method of constructing or identifying intervals. We can use the counting half steps method to construct any interval. Let's learn how to use it to construct thirds. We will start with quantity. Quantity is what shows up on the staff. A third is a line to a line or a space to a space. Each of these intervals is a third. Some are major thirds, 
some are minor thirds, but every time you construct an interval of a line to a neighboring line or a space to a neighboring space, you are constructing some kind of third. So we see space to a space, third. Line to a line, that's another third. Whenever we're using neighboring lines or neighboring spaces, we're always constructing some kind of third. The quantity of each of these intervals is a third. To determine quality, we can count half steps. The thirds that are three half steps apart are minor thirds. The thirds that are four half steps apart are major thirds. The correct way to label a major third is capital M3. The correct way to label a minor third is lowercase m3. Check your keyboard to identify how many half steps separate the pitches on the staff and label each interval with a major third or minor third label. You can pause the video if you need a little more time. The first interval on the staff goes from a C to an E. It's some kind of third. Let's count the half steps to find out what kind of third it is. C, one, two, three, four half steps above is an E. Because this is four half steps, this is a major third. The next interval starts on an E and goes up one, two, three half steps to a G. Since this is three half steps, it's a minor third. Next in the bass clef, we start on an F and go up one, two, three, four half steps for a major third. The next interval starts on A and goes one, two, three half steps up to a C. That's a minor third. Now we have an E in the bass clef, up one, two, three half steps up. That's another minor third. Next we see a D that goes up one, two, three half steps to an F. That's a minor third. And finally, we start on a G and we go up one, two, three, four half steps to a B. Because that's four half steps, it's a major third. The same process for identifying the quality of thirds applies when there are sharps or flats present. Let's use our keyboard to calculate how many half steps there are in these intervals. That will tell us whether this is a major third or a minor third. Starting on an F sharp, one, two, three half steps up to an A. This is a minor third. Now let's count from an E flat to a G natural. One, two, three, four half steps. That means it's a major third. Now that we've learned how to identify the quality and quantity of thirds, let's learn how to construct minor and major thirds. How could you use the counting half steps method to construct a minor third above each of these pitches? Remember the first step, put it on the staff. Because a third is always a line to the neighboring line or space to the neighboring space, we can do that pretty easily. Now to construct a minor third, we need to move three half steps for each of these intervals. That will help us to arrive at the correct accidental. Starting on a D sharp and moving up three half steps. We arrive on an F sharp. Next we'll move from an A flat to some kind of C with three half steps. One, two, Three, we've arrived on something that looks like a B, 
but it has to be spelled with a C because that's what makes it a third for quantity. So we have to label this as a C flat in order for it to be a minor third. Moving on, we're going to go from a B up one, two, three half steps. We arrive on a D natural. We don't need any flats or sharps for this example because what's on the page is already a minor third. Finally, we start on an F and we move up one, two, three half steps. Is this a G sharp or is this an A flat? This is why we put it on the staff first. We know it has to be some kind of A. So the correct answer here is A flat. Now that we've learned how to construct minor thirds above a given pitch, let's practice constructing minor thirds below. The process is very similar and as always, we start by putting it on the staff. Let's write the line to line or space to space note below each of these given pitches. Now we count our half steps on the keyboard. Three half steps away gives us the quality of a minor third. Starting on D sharp and moving three half steps down. We arrive on what looks like a C, but it has to be spelled as a B sharp. That's what makes it the quantity of a third. Next, we move three half steps down from A flat. One, two, three. We've just arrived on an F. We don't need to change anything for this interval. An F is already on the staff. Let's count three half steps down now from a B in the bass clef. One, two, three. We see that we've circled G sharp A flat on the keyboard, but we need to spell it like a G sharp in order for it to be the correct answer. A minor third below B is a G sharp. Finally, we'll move a minor third below F. One, two, three. We land on a D, we change nothing. This is the correct answer. Now that we've learned how to construct minor thirds above and below given pitches, let's use the counting half steps method to construct major thirds. Remember, start with quantity. A third is always a line to a neighboring line or a space to a neighboring space. The only change now is that we count four half steps instead of three, resulting in a major quality interval. We have our pitches on the staff ready to go. Now we need to count up four half steps to see if we need to add an accidental. Starting on a D sharp, one, two, three, four. We arrive on something that looks like a G, but we need to spell it with the letter F. This is an F double sharp. A major third above D sharp is F double sharp. Moving on, A flat, one, two, three, four steps up. This is a C. It's not a C sharp, it's not a C flat, it's just a C. And we know that it's a C and not any other N harmonic of that pitch because we put it on the staff first. We knew it had to be some kind of C in order for it to be a third. Now let's count up four half steps from B in the bass clef. One, two, three, four. Is this a D sharp or an E flat? In this case, it's a D sharp. And finally, starting on F, going up one, two, three, four half steps, we arrive on an A. A natural is the correct answer. Now that we've constructed major thirds above a given pitch, Let's practice constructing major thirds below. As always, we start by putting it on the staff. Then we count four half steps to arrive at a major quality third below each of the given pitches. 
starting on a D sharp and moving down four half steps to some kind of B. One, two, three, four. We land on a B key. B is the correct answer. B is a major third below D sharp. Now let's count down from A flat. One, two, three, four. It looks like an E, but we can't call it an E because we put it on the staff as an F. So what N harmonic of E has the letter name F? The answer is F flat. Next, let's count down from a B. One, two, three, four half steps down is a G natural. This is already correct, and we don't need to add any accidentals. And finally, counting down from an F, one, two, three, four half steps down. Is this a C sharp or is it a D flat? Well, we're on the D space. That means it needs the letter name D. This is a D flat. We've now thoroughly covered the counting half steps method when we calculate and identify minor seconds, major seconds, minor thirds, and major thirds. We're about to move on to our second method of constructing intervals, which I call the key signature method. I know what some of you are thinking. I understand the counting half steps method. I get the right answer when I use the counting half steps method. I don't need another method. And yes, I completely understand where you're coming from and I understand that temptation, but I'm going to ask you to hang with me through this next part of the lecture. Using the key signature method in the short term might seem a little bit complicated. However, as we move to wider intervals, such as fourths, fifths, sixths, and so on, you'll eventually find that using the key signature method is more practical. Counting half steps also becomes a bit riskier on the wider intervals. It's easier to miscount when you have more half steps to get through. I'm going to show you how to use the key signature method to construct a major third above each of these given pitches. The process is relatively simple. As you can see, we start by putting it on the staff. Use the key signature of the lower pitch. When we apply the major key signature of the lower pitch to the notated interval that we've written above, we construct a major quality third. The first given pitch is an E flat. What is in the key signature for E flat major? Let's find it on our circle of fifths. There are three flats in our key signature for E flat major. And those flats are B flat, E flat, and A flat. Is G on that list of flats? No, it is not. So we don't need to change the G because there is a G natural in the key of E flat major. Remember, E flat major has B flat, E flat, and A flat. It doesn't have a G flat. It doesn't have a G sharp. It has a G natural. Therefore, a G natural is a major third above E flat. Let's look at the next pitch, F sharp. What is in the key signature for F sharp major? Find it on your circle of fifths. It's down at the bottom and it has one, two, three, four, five, six sharps. What sharps are those? F, C, G, D, A, and E are all sharps. Is A on that list? Yes, it is. So we need to change the A to an A sharp because there is an A sharp in the key of F sharp major. Therefore, an A sharp 
is a major third above F sharp. The next given pitch is an A natural, and we've written a C above it. What is in the key signature for A major? We find it right here on our circle of fifths, and it has three sharps. What are the first three sharps in our order of sharps? F, C, and G. Is C one of those sharps? Yes, it is. So we need to change the C to C sharp because there is a C sharp in the key of A major. Therefore, a C sharp is a major third above A natural. The last given pitch is a G flat and we know that it goes up to some kind of B. What is in the key signature for G flat major? We find G flat at the bottom of our circle of fifths and it has one, two, three, four, five, six flats. What are the first six flats in our order of flats? B, E, A, D, G, and C. Is B on that list? It absolutely is. In fact, it's the very first flat in our order of flats. So we need to change the B to B flat because there is a B flat in the key of G flat major. Therefore, a B flat is a major third above G flat. We can use this method for constructing any major third above. Plug in the key signature of whatever your lower pitch is. If you apply that key signature to the higher pitch, you'll have a major quality interval. In my opinion, the key signature method is a very practical way of calculating the interval of a major third above. If you know your circle of fifths and your order of flats or sharps, it's a quick process and potentially less risky than counting half steps. Half steps can be easy to miscount as the intervals get wider. The key signature method can be a little tricky when constructing other kinds of thirds, but it's worth learning. The process we use here will be applied to other intervals that we construct in the future. Okay, hang on. The road is about to get a little bumpy. Stay with me. Here are examples in which the key signature method is a little trickier, but certainly not impossible to use. None of the pitches on the staff are on our major circle of fifths. So we can't automatically look at our circle of fifths to determine what the key signature would be for any of these given pitches. How would we use the key signature method then to write a major third above each of these pitches? Not surprisingly, the first step has not changed. Put it on the staff. When a key signature for the given pitch doesn't exist, start with one that does exist and adjust from there. For example, our first given pitch is an E sharp. E sharp major is a hypothetical key. It doesn't exist on our major circle of fifths. So what E key signature does exist? E major. And according to our major circle of fifths, E major has four sharps. So an E to a G is some kind of third because E to G is a line to a neighboring line. What kind of G is in the key signature of E major? Well, what are our four sharps? F, C, G, and D. That includes G. So a major third 
above E is G sharp. The only problem is we don't need to know a major third above E. We need to know a major third above E sharp. There's an easy solution to this problem. If we raise both pitches by a chromatic half step, we will maintain the same quality and quantity of interval. It will still be a major third if we take both pitches and raise them by a chromatic half step. So E is raised to an E sharp. That means G sharp would be raised to a G double sharp. When we raise both of these pitches, we keep the same quantity and quality of interval. So the correct answer here is G double sharp. An E to a G sharp is a major third. An E sharp to a G double sharp is also a major third. Let's look at the next pitch, F flat. We don't have a key of F flat major on our circle of fifths. What F key do we have? F major. So we know we need to go up to some kind of an A in order for it to be a major third. In the key of F, we have one flat, and that's a B flat. So A is natural in the key of F. Now we need to find a major third above F flat. Let's move that F down a chromatic half step to F flat, which means we also need to move our upper pitch down to an A flat in order to maintain the same quantity and quality of interval. An F to an A is a major third. Therefore, an F flat to an A flat is also a major third. The correct answer here is A flat. Our next pitch is G sharp. There is no G sharp major on our major circle of fifths, but what kind of G key do we have? G major. G major has one sharp and that's an F sharp. So we know that the B above G would be a B natural. We need to find now a major third above G sharp. So if we raise our G to a G sharp, and also raise our B to a B sharp, we construct another major third. G to B is a major third. G sharp to B sharp is also a major third. So the correct answer here is B sharp. Let's do the last one. A major third above B sharp, which also doesn't exist on our major circle of fifths, but B does. B has five sharps. So we need to go up to some kind of D. What are the sharps in B major? F, C, G, D, and A. Is D on that list? Yes, it is. So a B up to a D sharp is a major third. That means that a B sharp up to a D double sharp is also a major third. Starting to make sense now? It's time to learn another tricky example of how to use the key signature method when constructing major thirds. Hang in there, I promise. This will all be worth it. I'm going to show you how to use the key signature method to construct a major third below each of these given pitches. We start by putting it on the staff. Now we need to check the key signature, but which key signature do we check? The given pitch, written in black, or the pitch we just wrote in red? Think back to what we just talked about 10 minutes ago. Remember when we said, apply the major key signature of the lower pitch? This is very important. 
even if your lower pitch is the one you've just written in, that's always the one we want to apply when we're using the key signature method. So, back to major thirds below. We need to use the key signature of the lower pitch. Our first lower pitch, which we wrote in red, is a G natural. What is in the key signature for G major? One sharp, and that's an F sharp. So in the key of G major, we have a B natural. This interval is correct. A major third below B is G. The next lower pitch we've written in red is a D natural. What kind of F is in the key signature for D major? Remember, D major has two sharps, F and C. So a major third above a D is going to be an F sharp because there's an F sharp in the key signature. The problem is we don't need to calculate a major third below F sharp. We need to find the major third below F natural. How do we do that? We know this is a major third. We can adjust both pitches down a chromatic half step and maintain the same quantity and quality of interval. Remember, if you're adjusting one pitch, you have to adjust the other one by the same amount to keep the same quantity and quality. So if I move my D down to a D flat and my F sharp down a chromatic half step to an F natural, we see that D to F sharp is a major third, therefore D flat to F natural is also a major third. A major third below F natural is D flat. Let's look at the next one. The next lower pitch we've written is a C natural. What kind of E is in the key signature for C major? Well, this one you should be very familiar with. In the key of C major, we have no sharps and no flats. Therefore, a C to an E is a major third. But we don't need to know a major third below E natural. We need to find a major third below E flat. We need to adjust both pitches by the same amount in order to keep the same interval. This is a major third. We can adjust both pitches down a chromatic half step and maintain the same quantity and quality of interval. So if C goes down to a C flat and E goes down to an E flat, we keep our major third. A major third below E flat is C flat. The final lower pitch we've written in red is an F natural. What kind of A is in the key signature for F major? Well, we know that F has one flat and that's a B flat. So we have an A natural in the key signature. F major has an A natural, but we don't need a major third below A natural. We need to find a major third below A sharp. We can adjust both pitches up a chromatic half step and maintain the same quantity and quality of interval. Let's do it. F goes up to F sharp. A goes up a chromatic half step to A sharp. F to A is a major third, therefore F sharp to A sharp is also a major third. A major third below A sharp is F sharp. F sharp is the correct answer. Okay, I know this is a lot of information and we're almost through all of it. Hang in there just a little bit more. We've learned how to construct all kinds of major thirds using the key signature method. Major thirds above, major thirds below, major thirds when the key signature exists, and major thirds when the key signature doesn't exist. What about minor thirds? Can we use the key signature method to construct those? 
This is a great question. The short answer is, yes, you can use the key signature method to construct minor thirds. It's important to remember back when we were talking about counting half steps, that a major third is four half steps apart and a minor third is three half steps apart. A minor third is one half step narrower than a major third. I'll take a couple minutes to explain how to do this on a staff, but as I do this, I want you to remember, if this is a major third, we can move the top note or the bottom note to narrow that interval. If we're moving the top note, we need to bring it one half step closer or one half step down. If we're moving the bottom note to change our major third to a minor third, we'll move that bottom note up a chromatic half step to make the interval one half step narrower. Some of you may get through this process and think, the key signature method is too complicated for minor thirds. I prefer the counting half steps method. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I feel the same way. However, I think this is still an important process to explain because it relates to everything else we're talking about in terms of intervals. Let's see how this looks on a staff. And we'll use a very familiar interval as our example. This is a C to an E. It's a major third. We know this because we could count four half steps, but it's probably easier to just recognize that in the key of C major, we have an E natural. Major thirds are four half steps apart. Minor thirds are three half steps apart. How could I adjust my upper pitch to bring it one half step narrower, one half step closer to the C? I can do this by changing my E natural to an E flat. This makes my major third into a minor third. But what if the upper pitch is the given pitch and we need to adjust the lower one in order to narrow the interval and bring it from four half steps down to three? We'll need to adjust our C. We'll need to bring it closer to the E. We can do this by adding a sharp in front of the C. We've just made that major third into a minor third. If you're very familiar with your minor key signatures, there's always the option of using the key signature method by plugging in the key signature of the minor scale. For example, if we have an A and we need to write a minor third above it, the third note in our A minor scale is a C. So an A to a C is a minor third. This may be easier for some of you and harder for others. It's good to know that this is an option, but it may not be the most practical one. Let's review what we've talked about today. We learned that diatonic half steps and diatonic whole steps can be called minor seconds and major seconds. We learned how to identify minor thirds and major thirds on the staff by counting how many half steps separate the two pitches. We've learned how to construct a major third and a minor third above or below any given pitch using the counting half steps method. And we've learned how to construct a major third or a minor third above or below any given pitch using the key signature method. Now would be a great time to use some of your online tools to practice identifying and constructing major and minor thirds.